Uh, the conflict actually, so after the uh, Christian Harris was, uh, after his uh, his project actually was declared the, the winner of the of the competition, and after those reactions in the after this this uh, disappointment of not having a symbolic, iconic, spectacular building or not having neither uh, Gary Zaha Hadid or uh, uh, Liebenskind, the conflict was open and the museum board resigned. This is also very uh, interesting, but there once there was a project after years and years after finally getting the first museum in, 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 in Poland. I mean, the, there is a museum of modern art in Wuj, this is important to mention, but the, the build, they are the hosting the building from the 19th century. So this is, was really like the first building of, uh, dedicated to contemporary art. And the museum board uh, resigned, and afterwards also the director resigned. So actually there was a building, there was a project of the building without the board and the museum. So it, also, it was a very particular situation. And actually uh, the uh, great part of the art world rejected the building, and the urbanistic dimension became much more stronger than the artistic one. The absence of the spectacular and iconic building has provoked irrational and emotional reactions, while the simple, honest, careless building dividing Polish society about many, uh, and, and showed ma uh, many divisions and fuels hidden in Polish society. Uh, the battleground of the conflict between supporters and critics of Christian Keres project was obviously the printed and digital media. It is worth noting the inconsistency of the language used to describe certain notions of architecture to the general readership of the daily press. Christian Keres project was at the same time described as conservative and avant-garde. However, there was a surprising logic beneath all this. For some, the expression avant-garde was obviously understood as being rooted in the architectural landscape, uh, uh, sorry, has been rooted in the modernist tradition, a tradition which had transformed the architectural landscape of Poland and indeed of most former Eastern Europe into a loosely organized set of what can only be described as rectangular blocks. Anything rectangular was thus regarded with suspicion owing to its possible connection with the authoritarian past past in which modernism was part of an unofficial uh, enforced ideology. In the Polish language, the words block, rectangle, box, and toy brick, when referring, re referring to architecture, are considered derogatory. Therefore, when particularly there was one journalist in, in the main uh, daily newspaper uh, who was very insisting on this, uh, using this uh, avant-garde and using those expressions like block, rectangle, box, comparing it to his shopping mail nearby his place or to his, the shopping mail of his uh, childhood. And so he, uh, and he was the one who wrote the article about the supermarket avant-garde who put the Carrefour on the, on the, on the, on the building. And he, so he used also the, this expression uh, proste pudvo, which means simple large box, to describe Carrie's proposal. It was far from a neutral phrase since it associated the museum with the box-like heritage of communist era city planning. So uh, actually it was very uh, um, astonishing how uh, the reactions were really aggressive. There were whole blogs, uh, there were discussions on the blog, on the newspapers. It was really like the, the it became really also very aggressive and it's interesting how such a non-aggressive in a way building provoke such uh, aggressive reactions. But what actually happened in one moment is that the, the country's newspaper are seen as the keepers of a certain set of civic values characteristic of the Polish freedom fighting ethos. The initial skepticism toward Christian Keres' proposal, moderately expressed by most of the respectable media, would probably have developed into constructive critique in the following weeks, and Keres' project would never have gained on the level of acceptance that it joins today. But the aggressive action against the architecture, a public call for his resignation, and the suggestion that he had been selected due to a plot within the jury, and this was complete by the museum director and the uh, program board members, radically changed the situation. Uh, the free media in Poland are a product of society, I mean, are considered to be a, a, a product of society distrust of the old communist authorities. The media see themselves as watchdogs, constantly having to defend the people, the individual, from the once oppressive representatives of power. So, 
a case in which an official body attacked the outcome of a democratically conducted international competition was immediately perceived as a clear violation of rules and of good practice. And in one further, in breaching the traditional rules of Polish hospitality. Christian Keres suddenly began to be presented by the media not as a proponent of a, of, a, of a radical sort of architecture, but as a lone, gentle visitor who publicly declared his fascination with Warsaw and expressed his wish to adapt the project to local demands. His restrained conduct, reminiscent of the restrained architect, architecture he heralds, stood against an authority which demanded the right to disobey the rules. An attack on a foreigner, a representative of the whole world, as some of the, uh, of the internauts wrote in, in a, on, a, on a blog, was seen simply as a scandal. The press started to defend the position of a discrepancy between the demand of an iconic architecture and the urban realities in Warsaw, in which the palace of culture represents the ultimate icon and any building built there can withstand the unique neighbor. So there, there was this moment actually of the shift in the media, in particular in the press, where, where there was a moment of attack of saying how actually the, the, oh, they were all disapp disappointed and how it would look like a communist uh, building. Since this moment when some journalists started actually to even to to interview him, there were discussion in the Union Architects, so it became really like a public discussion, and then there was shift in the media. So it's also to consider to, to uh, it's also interesting to consider the power of the media also in this situation when there was a shift, and then Christian Keres actually was seen as a gentle architect from Switzerland who is fascinated with Warsaw because in one an interview he said how much he likes Warsaw, which for the which was also important to hear because Warsaw also had this trauma of being destroyed, reconstructed. And, and so on. And so there was this, uh, how to say, this positive shift, which is finally, he in a way has been um, received, I mean, he has been received more positively, although it hasn't, I mean, the, the controversy hasn't stopped really yet. And so the, uh, because actually the, the contract has been signed between the major of Warsaw and the architect only on the 12th of April. So it means uh, two months ago. So it lasts for uh, a year and, uh, and a half. And so the building still doesn't exist. It hasn't been uh, constructed. I mean, had they haven't even been started to, to build it. But as I'm here also, we already, I mean, started our, uh, the museum started its uh, activities by, uh, from temporary headquarters. Because actually what happened, the, the, the previous museum board, they were like mostly Mm, talking about having like meetings and they were doing most administrative work while in the meantime after the, there was a change when Joanna Mitkowska was nominated the director of the of the of the new museum uh, the munici municipal, municipal authorities have gave the space of 1050 square meters for temporary uh, operation and I, I will show you later it's a very central it's nearby the intercontinental hotel and this is already prepared so it's like important things internet inter Continental Hotel and Daniel Liebenskind uh, future long uh, uh, building and uh, actually it's a very interesting uh, place because it's uh, situated in the very center of Warsaw it's also it's uh, from the it's a block of flat actually so it's all a modernist building from the 50s end of the 50s beginning of the 60s and uh, in front of this uh, passage there is a furniture shop it's a kind of a um, socialist uh, ikea i would dare to say and this is, was also the part for a tapestry and uh, on the first floor there was a, a cafeteria and then they, they I mean, they, they closed like a few years ago and then so the city gave it to the museum to use at temporary headquarters. So this is how it looked when uh, we, we had it on November, we entered there in, a, in, a, in a November. And which is also interesting, and it's, there is, uh, it is in, situated in a block of flats. So actually, the first, the, uh, the, this, this part in the first floor, and then there are all flats. So we, for example, we host uh, the community meetings twice a month. Like it, it, it was not easy because for them it's really difficult to understand what, how a museum can be there. I mean, we, there is this neon, which it, in, in a way indicates that there is museum, and so there is a, a block. Of flats, and so they really don't understand how how museum, and they were like, and usually they're elder like 
person living there, so really also used to the communist time, and they, for example, they were arguing that we are, that the, 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 the um, uh, neon is stealing their electricity. So this was a big argue with them, we were trying to explain them that we are not stealing their electricity, that, and <laughs> so, but uh, this was like a big challenge to, to start the activities there. And uh, so we started in November, and as I hope you, you understood from my previous words. I mean, the, the, the history museum, so it's actually a history uh, full of friction. This museum is not built on a consensus, but more on a, on a, on a, on a, on a conflict, on a antagonist forces, on a confrontation. And so actually we, uh, we tried the, in a way to have also the, um, the, the, prog the programmation of the museum to go in this direction, in a way to reflect also the conflicted society that, that surround us and those that surround the history of the museum. So uh, when we started the temporary, I mean, in, we started our t activities in, tempor in the temporary space, and it's interesting because uh, this uh, furniture shop is called Emilia, so Emilka, this is, and so we are in the Emilia. It's the way to explain to a taxi driver, for example. And so uh, we started our temporary activities with lectures and screenings and uh, with um, editing a magazine called the Museum. And what I actually wanted to say that starting from this idea that it was a conflict, that actually was a very interesting situation, our first guest was Galit in uh, November who did uh, a screening and had a lecture and the day after the so-called uh, muse uh, weekend museums we had uh, Artur uh, Zmijewski who showed his film uh, Them from the, um, uh, from the Documenta and Claire Bishop. Uh, and then there was the presentation of the Berlin Biennial in February, the presentation of the collective uh, Schkart from Belgrade. And uh, actually, what is, uh, what is interesting and the, the fact that now after these debates ab about like the, the definitions of contemporaneous in museum, which are very actual like, uh, I mean, worldwide, not only in Poland, but the the, the case of the of the of the of the, Poly, of the Warsaw Museum is also very interesting because uh, what what actually uh, is is uh, what actually happened that the, mm, the like most the public opinion believe that the new museum will fuse cultural experience with transportation and leisure zones. As one, this is was read in the press release. Such dreams of fusion of the friction slags intermingling of culture and leisure align with what I mentioned before, the notion of the liquid modernity, while echoing the increasingly dominant view of cultural institutions as a kind of urban loss leader generating consumer activity all around them. The Warsaw MoMA, as so many uh, contemporary art museums, has in some sense has been put into the service of politics, the neoliberal politics of cultural consumerism, and this Nina already had talked about that. So one task actually of the, the, the first new Polish museum dedicated exclusively to art since the National Museum that was built in 1938, will, will actually will be to find a way to avoid incorporate structure and to become to find a new a new model a new direction because this is actually the good thing that the the Keres building disappointed all the expectations of the Bilbao effect of calculability predictability efficiency and so on and so while like but in the meantime as there there is no mm, actually we are uh, building our collection strategy and also the exhibition strategy in a way. And so also there are other agents, so the, the history of the museum itself, the history of Warsaw, but also the geographic, mm, this, I mean the geographic uh, mm, area where Warsaw is situated. So also the, the communist past, which as you can see from the reactions to the building is still, there is some pro still some problems with the communist past in, 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 in Warsaw. So the, this transitional moment and also the relationship to other communi ex-communist countries of other Eastern European countries and Zdenka Benovines did an excellent work about that in, in the Moderna Galleria. So I think this, all this agent is something that the museum uh, will consider in its collection, in its programmation, in its uh, activity, and this because what the interesting thing is actually that there is no there is no such uh, communication between the former um, communist countries, the Central European or Eastern European countries. There was a moment of the 90s of the 
Soros phenomena, so there was kind of more communication, but then now it's like they're all, 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 the, all these countries are more oriented to the to the west than to the east. And so even the, there was a moment maybe in the 70s between, for example, Polish and Yugoslav artists, but then actually it stopped in, in, in the 90s. And so considering all these things, and also what is interesting, uh, it's that being in this temporary space, in this very specific space, actually gives a certain uh, freedom. It, it permits to experiment in a way, to be like more experimental institutions and to try to be a flat platform for research, to find a new model, to deal also with those subject that use that are not so common and also to be like more open internationally because the interesting thing is like this is maybe sounds even stupid but I'm like I'm not Polish and so it was very it was kind of new also uh, phenomena to have an, a, a cur curator working for the museum who is not Polish so th this is like also like the, the one of the new approach let's say to the to the museum and also uh, and this is, yeah, so, sorry, I forgot about this picture. This is, we organized the Night of the Museum. This is, was the uh, National Night of the Museum. And we wanted, in a way, to include the community, the, 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 the people who are living in this block of apartments. So we asked them with, uh, who, which were their favorite films. So we did a kind of uh, enquete going from uh, flat and flat. And uh, everybody was, like, sure that it would be uh, two or uh, one famous Polish and one famous Russian film, but to a big surprise, it was Dirty Dancing. So we projected <laughs> Dirty Dancing for the night of the of the museum in this uh, passage, and the project was called uh, Kino Passage. And so, uh, uh, considering all these things that I, I said before about the geographic position and uh, uh, and agents that are related to it. The first, uh, and also because the the, uh, the the important task of the museum is also in a way to map, to 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 find out, to research also the 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 art from like this part of so-called Eastern or Central Europe, or ex-communist Europe, and also to uh, to consider like uh, the cultural and political interpretations of the context where the art part practice took place. So the first exhibition actually of this, uh, because those were only events, and the first ex exhibition that is going on till uh, Sunday, it's called When uh, I Open My Eyes I See a Film, Experiments in uh, Art in Yugoslavia in the 60s and 70s. So actually it was, uh, uh, when, when I started working for the, for the museum last year, I did a uh, research about the experimental film in former uh, Yugoslavia. And then uh, what, what it was actually interesting, it was that uh, uh, this first exhibition is also a product of a research, so it's kind of an ongoing uh, project. And it also, it, so it's this part of the, of, of the, I mean, it was, it is focused on Yugoslavia, and so we, it was also interesting because the first, muse, the first exhibition of the not existing yet museum is about a not existing country anymore. So this was also very, like interesting. But uh, so I will just tell you something about actually the the show, which uh, it um, takes. So this is like we we change the 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 space. And uh, the show actually is uh, dealing, when I start my, my research about experimental films, I uh, researched the cine clubs in former Yugoslavia because that's where experimental films were made at the time. And those cine clubs were very interesting phenomena because they were amateur cine clubs, but uh, actually the people who were like gathering around the cine clubs were young people, mostly students, who had a very high knowledge and consciousness about the film. So they really started experimenting, and so it's going uh, uh, or in a more artistic direction or in a more, like, say, socially engaged, engaged direction where um, some part of this... Um, Cine Clubs member were become a famous film direct, director, very socially engaged. And so actually we wanted to uh, show the art from the 60s and particularly from the 70s in former Yugoslavia because it's also uh, very interesting what is going in this period in former Yugoslavia. But from a new perspective, from the perspective of... Uh, of um, 
of these uh, cine clubs as were understood as platforms actually of experimentation and of freedom in the way because there were this was part of the socialist project to give uh, to make um, uh, technology available to everybody to permit everybody to make make a film so we we are showing in, in this part some artists from the 60s because from these cine clubs there was a whole a whole discussion and theories about experimental films and there were, they did a manifesto in the 63 which was called anti film and us and so it was in interesting considering all these 60s there was this nihilistic orientation toward the the, the art in the and there were like uh, examples of anti painting anti uh, group uh, anti review anti art and so on and also uh, it, it was interesting to make an exhibition about the 60s and 70s in Yugoslavia because this is the period where most interesting things in are, are happening in Yugoslavia and also because Yugoslavia was a very specific has a very specific position uh, relate, in relation to other uh, socialist countries, so it was it was not part of the Soviet bloc. It was not a capital a capitalistic country, so it was in this between. And uh, to to stay in this between position, also the, the uh, openness to culture was one uh, of the ways. So in the in the beginning of the 50s, there is already like um, official shift from the social realism to modernism and this is why uh, this is the very entrance of the show and those those collage on the wall are the example of one group from the 50s who did the manifesto actually named the abstract art the so-called exit uh, 51 so we wanted to show that actually in this very particular uh, political and social context in Yugoslavia when artists could travel and they also knew what was really going on at that time in uh, in in the in, in the rest of the world what actually happened and also because for example there was an exhibition of uh, Yugoslav art conceptual Yugoslav art in the 70s in Poland and that that's all so uh, actually Polish public has never be, had the possibility to see those works of art only if they travel to Vienna or some like other Western European countries or maybe uh, Ljubljana to, to, to see them but otherwise it for m m most of them it was the first time this is how actually it looked uh, the long corridor how it looked now how it will look till the Sunday for the show this is a um, display designed by the Polish artist Monika Sosnowska who had this idea that to make these uh, white boxes that uh, like ironizing a little bit the white boxes and also to have this idea of, of a film of walking to, to frame like a homage to the uh, cine clubs which were a starting point of the of the show so I will go just quickly through the show because this is our example of anti-painting and anti-art so this is our most artists from the from the 70s conceptual artists so there is also a lot of documentation because it's a moment when they're actually leaving the exhibition spaces and going to the street organize exhibition in the streets we also included some part of the uh, 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 this is the group Oho from Ljubljana we included some part also of the Novi Sad avant-garde which is a city in the in the north of Serbia where we are not so known and represented this is the view from the outside this is a room dedicated to, to Sanya Veković because unfortunately there are only two women in the exhibition, but at least they're very strong when they are. So we, the whole room dedicated to Sanya Veković. So this is in the 70s, actually, I would just say this and I will finish. What was interesting to consider, so the, the cine club phenomenon in the 60s, because afterwards they organized the film festival, experimental film festival, and the film was really a trigger to discuss also many other things, even visual arts. And in the uh, end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, what is happening in former Yugoslavia is the phenomena, particularly after 68, is the phenomena of the student cultural center. So all those artists were working in the student cultural centers and also we want to show the permutation way of the cine clubs and the use of the of the, of the video in the in the 70s so here is marina brown which we needed a star at least for for a show and this is the the last of you from the outside and that's it thank you אנה ינבסקה תציג את הפרודקט החדש בוורשה, את המומה ורשה, שם ההרצאה שלה זה טריטוריות חדשות במוזיאון, מוזיאון בטריטוריות חדשות, המקרה של מוזיאון המומה בוורשה. Uh, 
Uh, I want, first of all, to thank uh, uh, Galit and Elia to have invited me here, taking care of me and all of us. I'm very glad to be here. So as Galit said, I will talk about actually the history of the competition for the building for the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, its uh, controversies and about the actual um, activities of the museum in the temporary spaces. So, uh, Warsaw is the only capital in Europe lacking a museum of modern art. Since the opening of a national museum in Warsaw in 1938, not a single independent museum building devoted to art has been erected in Poland. The building of the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw should reflect these changes and refers here to the changes of 89 and constitute a new symbol of Warsaw. Located in the direct vicinity of the Palace for Culture, the building will engage in dialogue with the aesthetic, political, and moral history of this area. An international design competition should result in the new image, uh, in the creation of exceptional structure that will contribute to shaping a new image of Warsaw as a city of culture. Like other capitals, Warsaw needs an architecturally appealing center for contemporary culture that would be a significant tourist destination. So this is a preliminary concept for the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, approved by the Museum Advisory Board in 2005. And actually, we just show you a short timeline, museum timeline, what happened with the museum. So as you see, in March 2005, the Ministry of Culture and the Major of the capital city of Warsaw signed an agreement establishing the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw. In July, there is a resolution of the Council of the capital city of Warsaw on the joint management of the Museum of Modern Art. A plot of its construction is in front of the Palace of Culture. I will show you the images later. And in February in 2007, so two, one year and a half later, the winner of the International Architectural Competition for the Design of the Museum Building is announced. And the museum is supposed to be built in 2014. So the museum status, the Ministry of Culture and the National Heritage is responsible for running the institution. The city of Warsaw is responsible for erecting the museum building and provides the institution with space for temporary operations. The objectives uh, helping the development of Poland's modern identity, collecting artworks and preserving significant achievements in the realm of contemporary art, preserving art from the countries in transition, I will talk about that afterwards, and researching modern contemporary artistic culture, education, and publishing projects, creating a society-wide interest and support for arts. The architect, the winner of the, so the winner of the competition is the Swiss architect Christian Keretz, and his most uh, famous project is the Kunstmuseum Liechtenstein in uh, Vaduz. The building, so the building is supposed to, uh, the, so the usable area of the museum is supposed to be 29 thousand square meters. Exhibition space is around nine square, thousand square meters. Public events around, so auditorial library restaurants around five and a half square meters. Support spaces, offices, museums, technical and things, for, so for more for the museum, four and a half thousand square meters. And multifunctional space, which means com possible commercial use. It's even more than an exhibition space. I mean, it's really huge. This is like almost even bigger than, than uh, Tate. So uh, this is the Palace of Culture. Oh. I wanted to surprise you, but. <laughs> so this is the Palace of Culture, this, this uh, big building. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, uh, about that uh, after. And this is where the museum is supposed to be uh, built in 2014. And this is the project that actually uh, win, in a way, the, the competition, the project, Christian Keller's project about the museum, the huge museum. So, uh, as I read from this preliminary concept, the expectations for the future building or the Warsaw MoMA were actually to be a new symbol of Warsaw, to engage a dialogue with the Palace of Culture, to offer a new... No, not to touch it, okay. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> To, to offer a new image of the city and particularly to make a city an appealing tourist destination. But two days 
Uh, after Christian Kerry's project won the international design competition for the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, the biggest newspaper in Poland published on the first front page of the Warsaw section a digital collage found on internet. It showed the winning museum project with the huge logo of the Carrefour supermarket chain on one of its walls. So, and, and the title of the article is uh, The Supermarket of Avantgarde. So that was public dissatisfaction with the outcome of the first international architectural competition organized in the Polish capital since the end of the communist rule had received a sort of official recognition and the controversy started. Uh, to its detractors, the structure carries and vision looks like a supermarket, but even most of these critiques feel that the low slung building will provide a welcome contrast to its neighbor, the Palace of Culture. Actually, the, so, uh, the socialist realist pile that you will see after uh, the, was, a, uh, was a Stalin's gift to Poland. It was erected, it was finished in 1955 and has dominated so the, the center of Warsaw for 50 years. And in front of the Palace of Culture, uh, there were organized military parades during all the Soviet uh, period and just after the... Um, and then after the, uh, the fall of the communism, there were amusement parks, and now there is a huge supermarket. So uh, actually, this is very important because uh, before the destruction of Warsaw and during the Second World War, the, this place where is now the, uh, the Palace of Culture, it used to be the very center, the very core of Warsaw. So after the Second World War, actually, they destroyed the few uh, buildings left there to, the, uh, to build the Palace of Culture. So th this is very interesting. This is one of the examples of these defilades during the this, the, during the uh, Soviet period. So the uh, Palace of Culture and Science has become a city landmark, but at the same time, as a gift of Stalin, it was primarily perceived as a symbol of oppression with strong ideological meanings and connotation. And then it's even more easy to understand that the historical, ideological, psychological, and social traumas with which the idea of building a museum in front of the Palace of, of Culture was overloaded. Because actually the museum, uh, the, um, the, um, the, 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 the city of Warsaw now really doesn't have a center, doesn't have a core. So the, in a way now this, the this Palace of Culture has become a... Uh, a center of Warsaw, and so what is interesting that, like in the 90s, they even had a, a clock on the tower, on this major tower here, and there are a lot of city servants who are now operating in, in, in the Palace of Culture because it was a way of appropriating the Palace of Culture, making it more like more human in a way of more to, to, to appropriate it to the to the city, but still it's really like it's really imposant. And uh, the museum was one of actually the first, uh, the, actually there, the, uh, even before there were ambition to, uh, ref, uh, to, to change this, uh, this place in front of the, of the Palace of Culture and to revitalize the Centrum of Warsaw. The, the first example it was in 1992 when two Polish architects won the first international competition organized in Free Poland. It was the urban master plan competition for the center of Warsaw that would surround the Palace of Culture and Science. Very soon it was clear that the main objective was to hide the Palace of Culture, to make it invisible, to destroy it, or it, to cover it with... Actually, the idea was to make circular boulevards around the Palace of Culture and to uh, construct high buildings and sky, sky, high towers in order that the Palace of Culture would not be visible anymore. And there were a lot of also urbanists and architects who claimed that the best thing it would be to destroy it completely, which caused such amount... I mean, it's impossible to, to, to destroy it. So uh, with this example in the, in the 90s, I mean, none of those projects were realized and mostly due to the slow and efficient bureaucratic system, system but also because the, the architects who won this, um, uh, this competition were the architects who designed those block of apartments in the 80s. And so there was kind of this communist still, they were reminded too much the communist time and I, that was one of the reasons that were not uh, constructed, and this is very typical, like buildings that you can find also in the very center of, of Warsaw. But with this example, for the first time in post communist history of Poland, architecture together with urban planning has been at the center of public attentions. But back in 1992, public attention was somewhat more concentrated on how to make ends in the, meet in the context of the market economy, which in Poland was by, the, uh, by then only two years old. 
Ration cupons for meat had finally been abandoned only three years previously. Such an ambitious urban design competition was clearly a symbol of the aspiration of the new Poland, but not much else. Over 15 years later, the space around the Palace of Culture is still devoid of any permanent development and any other competition has been just been concluded, I mean, a year ago. During the intervening years, several things have changed. Most importantly, Poland has transformed itself into a modern democracy. The economic boom has brought new possibilities and new expectations unheard in the past. Thus, to build a new modern art museum in Warsaw of a comparable size to the Tate Modern is now no longer just a dream. It has become a viable possibility. The museum building was expected to be a new iconic symbol and consequentially a potential catharsis of the city. It was expected to make a radical cut with the communist past, while Keres proposed a building devoid any symbolic program. The deception was big, as if it was possible to read in most important newspapers. The, plan, the planned museum was supposed to overwhelm the famous Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, and those expectations are not met by the winning project. Or, a new icon for Volso was expected will have minimalism instead. And actually, this, uh, uh, this I, I, Nina already talked about the Bilbao, and I will mention it in my paper, and this is the image of the, of the Bilbao, and you see in the previous Kristen Keres building, actually there is uh, a difference, but this was, was mostly of, uh, of, 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 like, not only art public, but mo mostly of, of Wars people from Warsaw had in mind when they were thinking about the future museum. And for example, one uh, editor chief of the architecture mag of the only architecture magazine in Poland, she declared that the winner is a project opposing such creation as the Guggenheim Bilbao. And she admired the decision by the jury, but warned that the public promise to build an iconic museum would not be fulfilled. She was afraid that an architecture too neat and avant-garde could be regarded as incomp incomprehensible in Poland. So the Bilbao effect, actually, the impetus given to the Basque city by the presence of the Frank Gehry's new Guggenheim, percolated through the media into the minds of the decisions makers. So actually, there, there is still this anecdote circulating in Warsaw that f 10 years ago, Frank Gehry uh, came to Warsaw and he visited Anna Rottenberg, the famous Polish curator, and then he, did, did, he drew on a napkin the future Warsaw Museum. So this is kind of a legend. So everybody was expecting at least Frank Gehry. <laughs> because actually also the, the urban environment in Warsaw is very complex because it's, uh, in a way there is really like a, a multi-layer of historical styles with some sectors revamped in the image of globalized urbanism and other left untouched by the massive redevelopment efforts of recent years. Warsaw embodies what Polish philosopher Zygmunt Bauman has called liquid modernity. Moreover, Poland's recent economy success has been marked by the new skyline of Warsaw, with its much rooming offices, to offices towers that reach over 200 meters in height. So this is a, a view of Warsaw. And phallic architecture is the prevailing sign of the new nation's ego. The Polish media have never dared to ask if erecting so many skyscrapers nationwide is the right thing to do. And there is the, another uh, skyscraper is uh, under construction. It's a Daniel Libeskind uh, project. And uh, because there, there, the, this, this phenomenon is not typical only for Warsaw. In whole Poland, there are these... I, they're not so high, maybe, but they're, like, very long, <laughs> let's say. And... Uh, uh, and so uh, one of, um, uh, uh, actually, so the media w w never talk about this phenomena and they were always talking who is going to be the architect of the new uh, museum. Bec and, the, uh, and the most prominent, I mean, who have become virtually household names are read of, in, in order of, re of uh, the reaching public prominence, Frank Gehry, Daniel Libeskind and Zaha Hadid. Uh, Norman Foster did, um, I don't have image, he did uh, uh, in 2003 um, a building in Warsaw, but it's circular and very low, so actually it's, nobody even knows that he, he, he did it. So the media have helped create a unique approach to architecture now widespread in Polish society. There are those few iconic creation by star architects, preferably by one of the three mentioned above, and there is all rest, which seem to matter very little. So Kristen Keres was part of the, of the rest. 
So, when the country embarked on a journey whose final destination bore the title uh, Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw and the price tag exceeded 50 million euros and in 2008 prices it's already almost 100 million euros, everyone expected that all the public money and effort would go towards securing a project by either Frank, Daniel or Zaha. The new museum for Warsaw should be so strong in expression that it can't wit withstand the rivalry of the social realist ornate architecture of the Palace of, Scu of Culture. I think Zaha Hadid could be up to this job. This is what uh, one of the leading art curators in Poland said uh, when she was interviewed by the leading uh, daily newspaper in 2005. So, uh, actually, what what is the problem? Let's say with the so this is the again the um, the, the 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 site of the future museum. So, what is the the problem with the the Keres Museum to 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 really like provoke such such? I mean, I uh, I didn't quote all the reactions because it's a very interesting phenomena how how the the press reacted and how the art world reacted in Poland because actually the the Keres building in some. Um, in comparison to the verticality of the high-rise building from the 50s, it's very consists of stacked and horizontal plazas. The proposed building does not attempt to appropriate the neoclassical architecture of its immediate surroundings. Instead, the new art museum creates another pulse. The Palace of Culture is a monument who, whose facade do not allow any insight and whose volume does not, does not reveal its inner spaces and organization. The new art museum reverses these characteristics by presenting itself as a vast and transparent interior. So those are the images actually of the of the project of the so it's very horizontal and this transparent part is dedicated to the uh, exhibition spaces. The lower part is dedicated to the multifunctional restaurants, shops, libraries, etc. and while the third one is dedicated to uh, no, sorry, the third one is the ex exhibition spaces and the other one is dedicated to uh, uh, offices. And this is, so this is how it should look uh, in, the, in, in the future. And this is the inner part. I mean, I don't have a lot of images of how it's going to be because this is really like the first, the project that from last year. So now they are, they are working on it more and I think that it will change because it was supposed to have just like these eight pillars and to be an open, large space, but I think that it will change because it's very difficult. And these are some Polish artists, Monika Sosnowska and Wilhelm Sasna, we did some simulation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>